Hello fellow engineers. So today I thought I'd be sharing some of my real life civil engineering knowledge. As you know, I've been a civil engineer for over eight years now. And in that time, I've mainly been doing sort of highway design, drainage design. Now a lot of you have been asking me, is the drainage design in city skylines realistic? So I thought we'd sort of go through how it works in the game and then I'd sort of compare that to what we do in real life. Real life. So first off, we'll start with some drainage design basics. So there's sort of two maybe, I guess three sort of categories of drainage design. You have your foul drainage. So if we just start down here, foul drainage is, well, waste from humans, essentially. <laughs> so let's say we've got some houses. Are they actually gonna build houses down here? Probably not. How do you start this game? <laughs> so people have come along, they've built these houses. And obviously people that live in these houses are gonna produce waste. <laughs> yes, I'm talking about poo. So this can be managed in a variety of ways. You can have like the old septic tanks where all the waste water goes into a tank and then that gets emptied. Or it gets connected to something called a foul sewer and then this takes the waste away to, I don't know, some sort of treatment plant and then it's dealt with there. I don't do much foul drainage, it's a load of shit. <laughs> ba -dum -bum That's the first type of drainage. So the second type we call surface water drainage. So essentially any hard surface or any surface really, as rainwater falls on it, water gets collected. Surface water, it appears on the surface. Essentially that's my sort of speciality. That's where most of my engineering experience is. So any rainwater that lands has to get drained, has to end up somewhere. Otherwise this road will just become a river. And the sort of the third type that I didn't really want to go into is groundwater. So basically groundwater kind of exists everywhere. Depth varies, it can be hundreds of meters below the ground. It can almost be, well, it can be at the surface level, uh, but I'm not gonna touch on groundwater because that's a bit of a complicated issue, but just remember that has to get managed too. So this game then, we'll start with the foul drainage because that's quite an easy one, I think. So if we go down here into water and sewage, we've got a few options. So obviously drinking water, we can put a tank thing in and that provides a water source. And then to connect them up, you use a water pipe. So this is what we would actually call a water main, at least in the UK. And it, it's got nothing to do with drainage really. But essentially you'd have a water source, maybe it's a water tower, maybe it's a reservoir. And generally it uses kind of gravity, sometimes pumps. And uh, these are high pressure pipes and it sends water to your house. So that's good. In this game, it looks like we need some electricity for that to work. So I'm just gonna bung a wind turbine. <laughs> A massive turbine just behind people's houses. So now this water tower will have some power and water will go to everyone's properties. So that's great. That's They've got their water supply, but that's got nothing to do with drainage, really, in my opinion. That's sort of, well, it's, it's a utility. So generally the owners of the water company or whatever, they will deal with that side. It's kind of, well, at least in the UK, it's privately owned. So, so my day job, that's not really something I deal with, but so I can't really comment on whether it's realistic or not in this game. But yeah, it's not, it's not going to go into the massive detail of, oh, what size pump do we need and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, so now we're looking at these houses. So they've all got a water supply, but they're all filling up with poo. <laughs> I think that's what that symbol means. So that's the foul water, we call it. So in real life, there would be a water treatment plant. Let's say it's down here. I assume it's gonna need power as well. So I'm just gonna give it a little turbine next to it. <laughs> so let's assume this is our water treatment plant. So all the foul water that comes to this gets nice and cleaned and then it discharges it into a river or whatever. I'm not entirely sure what happens at a waste treatment plant, but I probably don't wanna know either. <laughs> if I'm honest, but I'm guessing it's something like this. It gets cleaned up and then discharged. So anyway, how does the water get here? So generally most drainage design uses gravity. Gravity is our friend. Luckily on here, it's completely downhill from our houses to a water treatment plant. So you could kind of say the game's realistic because we can say this is our waste treatment pipe. So being in that area just means all these houses are connected. That's fine. So obviously in real life, if I was about to draw that pipe, there would be connections from all the houses to this sewer. Then this sewer goes all the way and connects to our waste treatment plant. So there, we've got a pipe from here. We've got the full, oh, that does actually go uphill. <laughs> That's not great. So for example, as the waste from this house leaves the house, so you flush a toilet or I don't know, turn the tap on, whatever. Any wastewater will be connected into this system and it will run down the hill 
to our waste treatment plant. Generally, these would always try and be downhill, but there's going to be a point where you can't. So like on this one, we've got this hill. I mean, usually what you'd try and do is just have a deeper pipe there, keep it going down and try and connect it up. But sometimes that's not possible. So you'd have to put like a pumping station. And what they try and do is say there's like several housing estates. They kind of make them all connect to a single pumping station and that allows the water to be pumped uphill. So let's just assume there's a pumping station there. We just can't see it. Well, these houses are about to burst. Their toilets need flushing. <laughs> Alright, so that's something that's not very realistic in this game. Obviously, we've got a water supply here, but we've also got the foul sewage. Like, they would never go in the same pipes. I guess it's somewhat realistic in that it actually shows two different pipes. Like I'm gonna assume one is like sewage and one's clean drinking water. So I guess they kind of got that bit right. So the other thing that's not that realistic is this bend. So in the water main system, like the clean water going to people's houses, it's all under pressure. So you can have a bend, that's absolutely fine. But for like your foul drainage, where it's all gravity based, you wouldn't have a bend ever. You'd always have one of these. Well, we call that like a manhole or a chamber. Essentially, it just allows you to access the pipe. So if you've got a change of direction or a change of gradient, it's likely that any silt or sediments in the water will collect at those points. So generally you put an access chamber there just so people can get down and clean them and maintain so they don't get blocked up. Also, the other unrealistic thing is this is a very long distance for a single run. In the UK, we look at maybe 100 meters between chambers, and that just allows them to be maintained. To say for whatever reason, this blocks up. There's a blockage like, in the middle of the pipe. So a company would come to the nearest manhole, they'd open the lid, or send a machine down there that unblocks the pipe. But obviously their, their hose is only so long, so they can only reach a certain distance. And generally that's about 100, 150 meters. Hence, that's the spacing we put these chambers. Say that point there is 100 meters, bang on. That's as long as the cleaning guy's hose is. Say the blockage is there, we now can't get that. Absolutely screwed. But if we put a chamber in there, we're only a couple of meters away. So I think that's just a little basic introduction as to how foul sewage works in this game. Not the most realistic. And also down here, oh, there's none coming out. But usually I think completely untreated water comes out, which is pretty gross. <laughs> if you've been watching my series, Engitopia, you would have seen. This can get pretty nasty pretty quickly. But yeah, right. So surface water drainage. So how does this game cope with surface water drainage? Well, in a word, it doesn't. <laughs> so for example, let's We'll go to the very, very basics of drainage design. So the basics are there's no built environment. It's all just grass. So ignore this over here. We're looking at this area here now. So what happens when it rains? So let's say we have a cloud up here and then it starts dropping some raindrops. The rain lands on this and some of the water will get soaked into the ground, into the soil. And some will slowly trickle its way down into the nearest water course. That's sort of the natural water cycle. But then humans come along and they're like, no, I want to build a road. I can put a road wherever I want. So now our nice green field has a lump of impermeable road in it. And impermeable means any water that lands on the surface cannot get to the ground underneath. So as you see here, the rain cloud comes down, the rain lands on the road and it's trapped. It can't get into the ground underneath and it just pulls on the road. Not great. So people like me, drainage engineers, my job would be to make this road be able to accept rainwater so it doesn't turn the road into a river and people can still drive on it safely. So there's there's quite a few stages to this. We'll kind of start with the rain. So the rain comes down, lands on the road. Depending on what way the road is falling, it will fall to one side or the other, or maybe it'll fall in both. There's generally straight roads, the camber is in the middle, so the highest point of the road is the middle. So as rain comes down, it will fall probably to that side and probably to that side. So along these curb lines, we get a nice little collection of water. And then if we look this way, we can see the road is falling left to right. So as the water's along this curb line, it will fall in this direction. So generally you want some sort of thing to take water off the road by the curb and get it away. So the most common way is called a gully, a road gully. So in the UK, this is the most common type. It's essentially just a hole in the ground, like a concrete hole in the ground, and it has a metal grating on top to allow the water to enter. So as the water goes into that hole in the ground, that's connected with a pipe. So the pipe will take water away, and that's sort of the next step of drainage design. So once the water is in your pipe, you then use what we used earlier. So we essentially these, chambers so we got a gully from our road and it's connected with a pipe to our chamber fantastic so let's just say that that round circle bit big 
<laughs> we'll just say that that's a gully for now. So that allows water to come off this side of the road and into there. Then this connects to a chamber, and then this chamber is connected to another chamber at the spacings we had before, for the outfall somewhere. So generally into a water course, and they'd have like a little head wall. This is what a head wall looks like. Now just allows a pipe to discharge water at surface level. So that's just a very basic sort of walkthrough in how road drainage works. So obviously it's a lot more complicated than that because this is only one gully. So this can only take a certain amount of water before no more water can enter that gully because it's just full. So generally you'd have say another gully there. Then you'd have that connected. Then you'd have another gully there and that connected. And then obviously you've got the other side of the road. So you'd have a gully there. And how how do you connect that? Do you, do you connect over? Do you cross the road? Crossing the road isn't ideal because say this pipe gets blocked this one and I don't know say it's damaged you have to dig it up you have to close the road for that because you've got a road crossing so generally you try to avoid road crossings to so say we had another gully here we probably wouldn't cross that we'd put that into a chamber and bring that down this side for example and then maybe cross it further down and then obviously you've got to calculate the spacings of these so depending on how wide the road is how steep it is for example but I think I think that's a video for another day <laughs> we're probably getting a bit complicated now but yeah so in terms of city skylines how does this game calculate road drainage or surface water drainage essentially it doesn't <laughs> So if we look at our roads, completely... Oh, look, look, there is a manhole. So essentially, a manhole or a chamber, that's what it looks like at ground level. And they've actually included those. So that's quite cool. Have they included any gullies? And sort of going along the curb line? No, no gullies. I think in America, gullies aren't the most common approach. They use something called a curb inlet. And a curb inlet looks like this. So if you've ever watched it, yeah, that's where the clown thing hides. <laughs> that's why we don't use them in the UK. Far too terrifying. But yeah, there are some chambers dotted around some manholes. But yeah, so in this example, we took our road runoff and we dumped into a river, which is fine. You can sort of do that, but you need to think about, for example, this was a field. So any water that landed on here had to go through the ground and sort of slowly percolate its way down into the water course. Now this is a hard surface. The water literally, as soon as it lands on the road, pretty much finds its way into a gully and then it's in a pipe and the pipe just flings the water straight down. So if you kind of think about that, the amount of water coming into this river after it rains is like so much more than the existing. And therefore, if we just did that everywhere, which to be fair, back in the day before drainage standards exist, that's what we did. You'll find as areas build up, you start to get flooding. So nowadays standards are in place to make sure the rate at which the water enters any water courses is slowed down enough to meet the greenfield runoff. So this is called the greenfield runoff rate. To so the speed at which rainfall that lands on a green field runs into an adjacent water course and so when we design our highways we need to make sure we don't exceed that rate ideally you actually want to reduce it so the most common way to do that is to have a sort of pond so say say we go back to our drainage design so gravity is bringing our pipe work down here and rather than dumping straight to the water we'd have a large green pond for example so let's say about here we build a massive pond so any water that comes down our pipes enters a pond so the pipe coming out of the pond will be restricted so it'll either be really small or have some sort of device on it that restricts the amount of water going through which means the pond will fill up and the amount of water coming out will be restricted by that greenfield runoff rate so generally you'll see especially modern developments there'll always be a sort of pond or some sort of above ground storage thing the other thing we need to look into is the water quality so obviously the water that was landing here it literally just landed on the ground fine like, it's just grass doesn't hurt anyone ends up in the river that's sort of our baseline so now if you think all the water that lands on here this is a dirty old road like fumes from cars like all those different chemicals they all sort of sit on the road and when it rains that all gets washed into our system we don't want all of that entering our water course untreated because then our rivers will become polluted so the other benefit of a pond or something similar like that it treats the water it allows it to go through the ground which cleans the water compared to if it just landed on the road straight into a pipe it's literally those pollutants straight into the river not good as far as i'm aware i don't think you can model ponds in this game you can probably like build one just randomly. Yeah, landscaping we can probably use when we have a big population. But yeah, it's not going to be a realistic pond because there's no surface water runoff in this game. But yeah, let me know how that was, guys. I'm going to... I plan on doing a few more episodes like this. 
Just talking about the detail of design in real life compared to this game. Especially highway design. I think that could be an interesting one. And road markings, that sort of thing. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed. If you did, please give the video a like. It really helps the old algorithm. Otherwise, peace, love and bridges. And I'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.